act as a representative in signing either the name of the represented person or that of the representative. The signature is the authorized signature of the represented person. Two, subsection B1 states that if the form of the signature unambiguously shows that if it is made on behalf of an identified represented person, for example, P by A, treasurer, the agent is not liable. This is a workable standard for a court to apply. Translation, you are removed from the realm of liability of being construed as a maker, drawer, acceptor, or accommodation party, and therefore as a surety by unambiguously identifying your signature as that of authorized representative. Signing in this fashion removes all doubt. Unambiguously indicate, read, the exact identification of the signing party. It also relieves the signer of all legal liability for the principal, represented person's obligation. The key is to be as unambiguous and as expositional as you can to reveal as much as possible about your agency status and however little space you have to work with on the instrument. Writing above and below works also, as long as it is unambiguous. Some interchangeable examples of workable signatures are Also, inserting the words authorized signature in a conspicuous, unambiguous manner, such as below the signature line, helps in indicating signer's agency status. Total confirmation from Big Brother of the validity of what we are doing. The final segment of this short essay reveals something that will convince even the fiercest naysayers, at least those who are not on Big Brother's payroll, of the correctness of our hunches and the criminal intent of the legal masters of the world. Looking at note 3 of UCC 3-402, which has to do with checks, we find subsection 3 is directed at the check cases. It states that if the check identifies the represented person, the agent who signs does not have to indicate agency status. Virtually all checks used today are in personalized form, which identify the person on whose account the check is drawn. In this case, nobody is deceived into thinking that the person signing the check is meant to be liable. Therefore, apparently, when the name of the represented person is printed on the face of the check, any agent signing for the represented person need not indicate agency status. Virtually all checks used today are personalized to identify the account holder, and since virtually all checks used today are personalized, nobody is deceived into thinking that the person signing the check is meant to be liable if he is signing as an agent. Follow this procedure. Go online and pull up www.deluxe.com. Under Personal Checks, check on Browse, our full line of check design. Wait a few moments while the next page, Deluxe Personal Checks Catalog, comes up. Click on About Checks and then scroll down to Check Security Features and observe the arrow mark, microprinting, and pointing at the signature line of the check. Next. Take out one of your personal, not business, checks and place it under a magnifying glass or microscope. Place it so the signature line is directly under the lens. Below is a blow-up of what you will see when you scrutinize the line. Authorized signature, authorized signature, editing note 3 of UCC 3-402 from above. In this case, nobody except the signer is deceived into thinking that the person signing the check is meant to be liable. Deluxe openly prints out the words authorized signature underneath the signature line of business checks, but disguises the same proclamation on personal checks. The reason the signature line on a personal check is made up of words authorized signature is because it is a physical impossibility that the account holder will ever sign the check. The account holder is an artificial person, in other words, John Henry Doe in all caps, and exists in name only. The Fed knows that every signature appearing on a personal check is the signature of the flesh and blood agent, the authorized representative. However, this fact must be concealed in order to cause the signer to believe that he is the principal when he actually signs as accommodation party, in other words, surety, and therefore 100% liable for everything the principal is liable for. This applies in every signature on every document, not just personal checks. 
The Lux and other check manufacturing companies must do this if they want to sell personal checks to Fed customers. Apparently, this is how the Fed justifies their deceit and duplicity. We told them. We put it right there on the check list. We can't help it if they're too stupid to know that they are not the authorized representative. When they decided to accept responsibility as the accommodation party for the account holder, they did so voluntarily. We can't help it if they volunteer to do something. We did everything we could to make it easier for them. We even personalized the checks with the account holder's name and spelled it out, authorized signature, right there on the signature line to save them the headache of having to write out authorized representative every time they signed a check. We can't be blamed for their ignorance. We were not supposed to find out about this device, but its existence is a full-blown confession and acknowledgement and validation of everything propounded in this book reads the distinction between true name and trade name. Big Brother knows precisely what it is doing reads subjugating us via the name. Welcome to the real world. Your signature. If UCC delineated check signing procedures are so important for Federal Reserve owners and the manufacturers of checks used within that system, it should be important for you as well. The overwhelming significance of Fed acknowledgement of the difference between the names by virtue of the inclusion of this artifice on every check cannot be exaggerated. In fact, this discovery alone is conclusive proof of their deceit in every controversy involving the trade name. Remember, the Fed literally owns the government, and therefore everything in America. This is confirmed in Senate Document 43, 73rd Congress, First Session. The entry by the same name in glossary. The message, you do not have to continue to volunteer to be responsible for the trade name's obligation, financial and otherwise. You can begin affixing your signature in the proper fashion now that you know the truth. You can always prove that you are nothing more than the authorized rep merely by pointing out the statement made on the signature line of your checking account. This phenomenon has unlimited application in your life. It is so profound that if someone were to be arrested and subsequently asked to sign a bond, he could do so as set forth above and incur zero liability for ever having to do with either the bond or the criminal charge associated therewith. The distinction between the parties is undeniable. In closing, our detect signature line subterfuge can be used to prove the legal correctness of what we are doing with anyone, including a stubborn Secretary of State who refuses to file a financing statement based on the hackneyed rule that you are contracting with yourself. If there were no difference between trade name and true name, the Fed would not have taken such extreme measures to conceal the fact that the signer of a personal check is only the agent. This revelation should bring about a sharp improvement in the lives of former slaves whenever a signature is required. <laughs>